this is about physics, and uh, please pay attention to the talk because in the end there will be a test. Okay. Uh, so Schrödinger is was one of the most uh, famous physicists of the previous uh, century, and he was uh, one of the creators of quantum mechanics, which is the physics of the microscopic world of the of the small. And I'll tell you more about this. And uh, I'm not sure if he really liked the cats, but uh, as you will see, he had some weird ideas about the cats, but actually coming from quantum mechanics. And I, what I will try to tell you is how these things could lead us to new technology, perhaps the new technology of the 21st uh, century. Okay, in physics, actually, the distinction between big and small is very clear, because what is big, for instance, planets are big, we are big, the universe is big, and what is small, atoms are small. Atoms are very tiny, and we know now that everything is made out of atoms. Okay, now how do we connect the small, the atoms, with the big? There is a, so to say, magic number that is involved, and this is called the Avogadro's number. It's a huge number. It's one with 23 zeros. It's really very hard to think about it. But why is this number important? Because everything we see around us more or less contains this number of atoms, about 10 to the 23, one with 23 zero number of atoms. Now, just to have an idea how big this number is, if, for instance, uh, in the air that we breathe here in this room, we have many atoms of the order of the Avogadro number, and we wanted to count the atoms, one after the other, and for each measurement, for each count, would take one second, then the whole, and, and we started when the universe was created about 14 billion years ago, we would not have finished, okay? So the number of atoms that are in, anywhere, there are, it's humongous, it's really very big. That means that the atoms are really tiny, very, very small. And everything is made out, out of atoms, and we are used to the physics of the world as we see it. For instance, if I drop, if I let this go, this will drop, or other uh, phenomena. But the physics of the atoms is very different, okay? Now, it's not obvious why it should be like that, but on the other hand, we understand it because the atoms are so tiny, and so they don't have to confront with the, our ideas of the macroscopic world. So what we say in physics is that uh, the world that we see, most of it is classical, but if we, go to the quant if we go to the atomic scale, the world is quantum. And the physics in this scale is quite, quite different. Now, since the atoms are so tiny, we cannot really manipulate them. I cannot really grab an atom. I can take a stone. I can take something which is smaller, a penny or something. But the atoms are so tiny, I cannot really manipulate them. And if I wanted to use their interesting properties, these quantum properties, and make new technologies or make new things, okay, then I would have to find ways to manipulate them. Now, since it's so difficult to manipulate them, in recent years, what we have been thinking about is making units that are bigger than atoms, not as big as what we see around us, bigger than atoms, contain many, but not so many atoms, but at the same time still keep some of these weird quantum properties that I will tell you about. Now, let me call these guys, this man-made atoms, meta-atoms. They contain many, but not too many atoms, but they still have some of these weird properties. So the idea that I'm trying to tell you here today is that there is a possibility that a new technology will emerge slowly or fast, we don't know, uh, that will come out of, this, of uh, our possibility to make bigger units, but that still have quantum properties, these meta-atoms. Let's see what, uh, let's discuss a little bit uh, of uh, what the quantum mechanics tells us. Okay, uh, what is the weirdness in quantum mechanics? Now, you know here in uh, Kazakhstan, there's lots of uranium. Uranium is very useful or useless, depending on your point of view, because primarily if you have an atom of a uranium atom, okay, it can break, okay, and then, it breaks, it fishes, 
and it gives different pieces. And these pieces can be used and produce energy or produce bombs and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, if, I, if now I take a uranium, if I go to a mine here in Kazakhstan, I take a uranium atom and I put it in a box. Then I know that I, this atom has some chance to stay entire as it is for quite some time or it break up. This process of staying or breaking is a completely indeterminate, completely non-deterministic process. And quantum mechanics tells me that because of this reason, because I cannot determine whether it's going to stay entire or break up, the atom can be at the same time in both states, both whole and both in pieces. This is contrary to our everyday notion. Everyday notion says that either it will be one piece or it will be many pieces. But quantum mechanics tells us that this atom can be in both combinations. It can be both at the same time, both whole, but also in pieces. That's because in quantum mechanics we use probabilities and what quantum mechanics tells us is that this atom can be in both states. Okay, this is a little bit weird, but nevertheless we can accept it because we don't see this atom and we can accept that. But this is what uh, Schrodinger thought when he, could cap when he couples this atomic with something uh, much bigger, something like us. So let's take now this box where I had my uranium atom and put in the box a cat, uh, a small uh, vase with, uh, unfortunately, not uh, perfume, but poison, and also have a hammer and a device on the right-hand side that controls whether the hammer stays uh, up or falls down and breaks, breaks this little jar. Okay. Now, this blue thing over there that has this radioactive symbol is where my uranium atom is. Now, if the uranium atom uh, doesn't break, then the yellow uh, box, which is a Geiger counter, uh, doesn't detect anything, and therefore nothing happens, and therefore the cat which is in the box is alive. If, however, the uranium atom breaks, okay, a particle is emitted, it falls on the Geiger counter, this releases the hammer, the hammer breaks the, the jar, and then poison fills the space and the cat is dead. Okay. Now, classically, we expect that the cat is either alive or dead in this box. Okay. However, quantum mechanics tells us because the atom itself is it's in both states, also the cat has to be in both states. And we write this in this fashion, and we say that the cat is at the same time dead and alive. Now, I have never seen a cat that is both dead and alive, but nevertheless, this is something that quantum mechanics allows us. So this is the quantum weirdness that when it comes to the macroscopic world, it sounds very peculiar, but nevertheless, this is what it is. So now the question is, if we have some weird properties of this type that come directly from the small world. Can we bring them up to the, our world and perhaps utilize them in one way or the other? Now, the solution for this or the ideas about this involve uh, making new uh, materials called metamaterials that have units that are, instead of atoms, there are these meta-atoms. So let me give you an example because this is something relatively new in, uh, in physics, in science, of the last 10, 15 years, 15, 20 years, perhaps. So up there we have Democritus, who is the guy who thought of the atoms first, many years ago. Uh, but of course he would never, I believe, have imagined that uh, the, now we could actually see them. So on the left we have a picture of atoms. This is with a specific device that can scan a surface of a metal, and these white dots are basically atoms. They are very tiny, but nevertheless, we have now the technology to see them. We cannot manipulate them, as I said, but nevertheless, we can see them. This is very important. Now, if we want to make something to manipulate, it has to be bigger. The, our unit should not be an atom. So on the right-hand side, we have something which is called a metamaterial. So it's a material where the units are not the atoms themselves. Of course, everything has atoms. But we have designed, you see this, I don't have a pointer, but we have designed this 
uh, rings, you see these rings, that they have a little gap. So these units have very interesting electromagnetic properties, and they make this system, this metamaterial, have very different properties from things that we would expect. So let me give you an example, an example of that. This is another uh, picture here, the green picture, uh, of that metamaterial where I have these rings again which are with a gap. These are called split ring resonators, and this is a metamaterial. Now, if you look at this artist creation up on the, left, on the right hand side, you see the, the phenomenon of refraction. If I have a, a piece, if I have a glass and I have water and I put a straw, because of refraction, I will see, this, I will see the straw broken. If I, had, if I could make a metamaterial water, a meta water, let's say, okay, then this would be able to harness the light and make it go in a different way, and I, I will have a picture like the one on the right-hand side. This is not an actual picture from physics. This is an artist's creation, but nevertheless, you see how different light uh, could be, how light can be manipulated and give rise to a very different uh, kind of uh, behavior or uh, motion in, in this uh, meta water, so to say. So metamaterials can have very peculiar, can introduce peculiarities that we can actually uh, utilize. Now, I want to take these metamaterials in the quantum world. This, what I showed you here, is a classical metamaterial. It's something that can manipulate light, but cannot do more than that. It cannot go into this weird uh, quantum world. Now, how do we do this? Well, we use squids. Now, squids on the left are well known and very tasty, but squids on the right, perhaps not everybody knows. This is the acronym for superconducting quantum interference devices, and this is nothing but a little loop made of a superconducting material. This is a material uh, which at very low temperatures essentially has no resistance, and the, and the current flows with no resistance, and it has this little gap there that says so Josephson Junction, and this is a very important, very important thing that makes potentially the, the, this little squid um, a, a very interesting quantum device. Now, these squids are, are not uh, new. They are known since the 60s. And uh, they are being used, for instance, in, uh, uh, in medicine in order to, uh, in order to detect uh, magnetic fields. For instance, in this picture down there, we see uh, in this dome there are many squids and what, they're, what they are doing, they are detecting very tiny magnetic fields, and from this, uh, medical doctors can actually analyze and see uh, if we have any problem in, uh, in our head. Now, these uh, squids can turn, we can turn these squids into metamaterials. Like I showed you before, I had these uh, split ring resonators, and with this I made a classical metamaterial. I can also make metamaterial with these uh, squids. Now, there are very interesting properties in these uh, metamaterials. And how, does, how, do, how do they come about? This is because these uh, little uh, rings have very dynamical properties. And one example of, uh, let's say, interesting behavior in these metamaterials is the appearance of chimeras. This is another uh, Greek uh, monster thought of, uh, from, uh, brought from the Greek mythology and I have a picture of it down there. And this is a combination of a lion, of a goat, and of a snake. Now, how do we get stuff like that in the metamaterials? This is in the picture on the right, and where you see that this, 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 um, this object, this device, could at the same time uh, exist in different, uh, different states. Here we have the orange state, which is, let's say, the lion state. The system is very organized, very coherent. Whereas in the other, the blue uh, state, the system is very incoherent. It's jumping around like, like a goat in some sense. So th these things cannot appear in real materials, but we can have it in uh, uh, this kind of squid metamaterials. Now, but still, this is not going to the quantum yet. And now the question is, how can we go to the quantum? What will be the quantum uh, the emergence of the quantum through these squids and how the cut of Schrodinger will appear. So do cuts 
and uh, squids mix in some way. Well, they have already been mixed, okay? And uh, we have a new device around, which appeared uh, several years ago, a few years ago, uh, which is called a D-Wave. It's the first, nominally the first, quantum computer that exists. So this is a device that uses squids in the quantum regime, and what this device does, it makes calculations, but with a completely different way. Remember, when I have a cat in the real world, it's either dead or alive. It's either one or zero. It's a binary cat in the real world. But in the uh, quantum world, it's both dead and alive, which means that it's both zero and one, whatever that means. So if I make a computer using Schrodinger cat ideas, then my, uh, the way I do the calculations in the computer is completely different. And the question, when I ask a question in a computer, okay, one plus one, how much is one plus one? The computer tells me two, because everything is very fixed. But in the quantum computer, the question one plus one does not have a definite answer. I get sometimes, sometimes two, sometimes 1.5, sometimes something else. But then if I ask it many times, I do some statistics, and I get the real answer. This is how a quantum computer would work, and this is an example of this, very possibly an, a, one, the first example of a quantum computer. Now, quantum computers compared to classical computers will be much faster, and will have also new properties that uh, we don't know and we do, we do not anticipate uh, yet. So, coming to the end, I would like to tell you that we are in, in, the, in, in an era where quantum, the quantum, which is the physics of the small, seems to be coming up to the big, to our scale. And this will introduce very likely very new technologies that we don't know yet. And the direction is uh, through these meta-atoms and meta-materials that we are able to, uh, to control and harness, and therefore through them bring the quantum up in, in, in our world, and not only the quantum. In some other way, we are combining now matter, the quantum, with information, quantum computers. And this unity, which is relatively new, will bring uh, new ideas up in this world, and very likely new technologies that we cannot anticipate. And thank you very much.